Good day, grade eight. Welcome to Tuma Mina Teaching. This is Noelle speaking, and today we're going to go through our only lesson uh, for term four, because usually term four is used as revision, because you need to go through all the work that you've covered this year before you write your exam um, in November. So today we'll be focusing on our planet, um, the sun, the different stars and so many different things that we find in the galaxy. Maybe things that you've never heard before, but we're going to learn a lot of new words uh, and a lot of interesting things about the space and the cosmos around us. So let's start off with the star of the show. It is the sun. Now the sun isn't just any star. It's a massive ball of hydrogen and helium that is undergoing nuclear fusion to explode and generate a lot of energy. So nuclear fusion is a process where two small atomic nuclei join together to form a larger nucleus, releasing a large amount of energy. That's where the sun gets all its energy from. Every second it's turning hydrogen into helium and that releases a large amount of light and heat. And so that is actually the light and the heat that we feel here on planet Earth. It's being released by the sun. So did you know that the sun's energy which is being released as light and heat is the reason that we have life on planet Earth. Without it, this planet Earth would be a frozen lifeless rock with no life contained on it. So the sun is the primary source of energy for living things on the earth. Without it, there would be no life because there would be no energy and there has to be energy for there to be life. So we know that the sun is a lot bigger than the earth, but do you know how many earths actually fit into the diameter of the sun? Pause this video and take a quick guess and then I'll tell you the answer when we get back. So what did you guys guess? Do you know that there is an unbelievable 109 Earths that can fit across the diameter of the Sun? That is how big the Sun is. So orbiting around the Sun we have eight planets, but our solar system is much more than just eight planets. There are moons, asteroids, comets and even dwarf planets all spinning through space. So we have eight planets in our solar system and moving from closest to the sun to furthest from the sun, we firstly have Mercury, then Venus, then Earth, then Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. So you might be wondering where the planet Pluto is. Pluto used to be classified as a planet, uh, but it was reclassified as an actual dwarf planet in the year 2006. Sorry, Pluto. So let's have a virtual voyage of all the planets out in our solar system. Let's blast off. First up, we'll visit the planet that is closest to the Sun, Mercury. It is the smallest planet in the solar system, and because of its proximity to the Sun, it experiences extreme temperatures, boiling hot during the day and freezing cold at night. It's a small, rocky planet with a surface covered in craters, much like our Moon. Mercury has no atmosphere to trap heat, making it one of the most unfriendly environments for life as we know it. Next, we have Venus. Venus is a thick, toxic atmosphere of carbon dioxide that creates a greenhouse effect that raises the surface temperatures to over 460 degrees Celsius, which is even hotter than Mercury, even though Venus is farther from the Sun. The air is so thick that it would crush a human standing on its surface. This makes Venus both fascinating and incredibly dangerous. Now it is time to explore your home planet called Earth. 
The Earth is the third planet from the Sun and the only one known to support life. It has the perfect conditions for living organisms, including liquid water, a breathable atmosphere and a balanced climate. Earth's unique position in the solar system within the habitable zone makes it just the right distance from the Sun to sustain life. Earth's distance from the Sun creates an ideal temperature range, allowing water to exist as liquid, gas or solid, and sunlight provides energy for the different food chains found on Earth. The Earth is in the perfect position from the Sun. If we were closer or further away, there would be no life because it would be too cold or it would be too hot. So Earth is in the perfect position for life to exist. If there are any major changes, we would all be dead. The Earth also has one moon which influences our tides and stabilizes our rotation. So traveling further away from the Sun, the next planet we will explore is Mars. It is often called the Red Planet because of its iron-rich red-colored soil, which has captivated the human imagination for centuries. It is home to the largest volcano in the solar system and has vast canyon systems. While Mars is cold and dusty, scientists are exploring the possibility of life, both past and present. So moving away from Mars, our next journey brings us to the fifth planet from the Sun, which is Jupiter. It is the largest planet in our solar system and it is known for its colorful swirling clouds and the iconic Great Red Spot, which is a storm larger than Earth that has raged for centuries. Jupiter is a gas giant with over 79 known moons. Next up on our adventure is the majestic planet Saturn. Saturn is instantly recognizable by its beautiful, extensive rings, which are made up of ice and rock particles ranging in size from tiny grains to house-sized chunks. Although Saturn is a gas giant like Jupiter, it is less dense, so much so that if there was an ocean large enough, Saturn would float in it. Saturn also has more than 80 moons and has lakes of liquid methane. Now we drift even farther into cold reaches of space to visit Uranus, the seventh planet from the Sun. Uranus is unique in that it rotates on its side with its poles facing sideways, unlike any other planet. This gives it unusual seasons. Each pole experiences 42 years of sunlight followed by 42 years of darkness. Uranus is an ice giant with an icy atmosphere made up of mostly hydrogen, helium and methane, giving it a pale blue color. It has faint rings and at least 27 moons. Finally, our journey of the planets ends at Neptune, which is the farthest planet from the Sun, a cold and mysterious gas giant known for its deep blue color caused by methane in its atmosphere. Despite being so far from the Sun, Neptune has the fastest winds in the solar system, with speeds reaching over 2,000 km per hour. It also has a faint ring system and 14 known moons. I hope you've enjoyed the journey through all the different planets, but what keeps all these planets from orbiting around the Sun and not just floating away into space? So that's where gravity comes in. Gravity is a force that pulls everything towards the center of our solar system, which is the sun. It keeps the planets, the moons, and even the rocks floating out in space in a predictable orbit. Beyond the planets, there are many other fascinating objects in our solar system. Asteroids are rocky bodies mostly found in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. Comets are icy visitors from outer parts of the solar system, and when they get close to the sun, they form beautiful glowing tails. So our solar system is actually just a small part of something much bigger, our galaxy, which is called the Milky Way. A galaxy is a massive collection of stars, all held together by gravity, and our solar system is just one small part of this grand structure. 
Our sun is located on one of the spiral arms of the Milky Way, not too close to the center and not too far out. This means that we are in a relatively quiet part of the galaxy, with fewer stars nearby. So have you ever looked up at the sky on a very, very dark night and seen a whole streak that kind of looks a whitish color with millions and millions of stars inside and wondered what it is? Well, this is what the ancient Greeks called spilt milk. And that is where we get the name Milky Way. So here on Earth, we use units like centimeters, meters, kilometers to measure distances. But you won't be able to use that to measure the distance in space. The distances in space are enormous. So we have a different measuring unit that we use to measure distance in space. A light year is the distance that light travels in one year, which is about 10 trillion kilometers. Additional to light years, we also use light hours and light minutes to describe distances in space. A light hour is the distance that light travels in one hour, and a light minute is the distance that light travels in one minute. So the Earth is about eight light minutes away from the Sun, which means that it takes the light from the Sun eight minutes to get to the Earth, which means that each time that you watch a Sun set, the Sun has actually set eight minutes ago. Let's learn about the closest star to our solar system, which is Alpha Centauri. Alpha Centauri is about 4.2 light years away. That's about 42 trillion kilometers from Earth. Alpha Centauri is actually part of a star system with three stars, and it's one of the brightest stars that we can see from the southern hemisphere where we live here. So our Milky Way is just one of billions of galaxies that are scattered across the universe. Do you feel small by now? Because we are very, very small compared to everything that surrounds us. Long before the invention of telescopes, ancient cultures and civilizations used to look up to the skies to make sense of what they see. They noticed that certain groups of stars formed recognizable patterns, which we now call constellations. These star patterns have been named and interpreted by many cultures, often linked to myths, legends or stories that help people to make sense of the heavens. Constellations visible in the southern hemisphere where we live include Orion and Crux. So what about a telescope? A telescope helps us to see things in the far distance, making them look much bigger, so magnifying them. The first telescopes were used in the early 1600s by astronomers like Galileo, who discovered that Jupiter had moons orbiting around it, something that no one had ever seen before. Today, there are many types of telescopes, and each one helps us explore different aspects of space. The most common types include optical telescopes, which use lenses or mirrors to collect and focus light from distant objects. Then, we have radio telescopes, which receive radio waves from space instead of visible light. In South Africa, we have the fourth largest optical telescope in the world, SALT the South African Large Telescope. It can photograph moving objects, but on a cosmic scale, and even played a role in the discovery of black holes. Another type of telescope, a giant radio telescope, is also being built in South Africa, which will help astronomers study the universe in even more detail. The telescope is known as the Square Kilometer Array, or the SKA. Both of these telescopes are located in the Northern Cape, where there is very little light pollution and the weather is also quite predictable. And just like that, we finished with the last lesson of your Grade 8 Natural Sciences curriculum. I hope that you've enjoyed the journey and that you've learned a lot along the way. Remember, this was only one lesson for Term 4, but go and look at our YouTube channel. There you will find many lessons of the Natural Sciences curriculum that you can use for revision so that you can reach your full potential for your Natural Sciences in Grade 8. 
Remember to test yourself in the self-marking assessment below, which the link will be added in the description. Thank you and we hope to see you in grade 9.